Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I am so excited because I finally got accepted into the GitHub Copilot for Docs beta. Now, if you've been following the channel for a long time, you know that I'm a big fan of AI and what it can do for developers. So ChatGPT, GitHub Copilot X and GPT-4, all that I think is fantastic and we can actually leverage it to be more productive. So I'm very excited because in this video I'm going to show you GitHub Copilot for Docs, which is a feature or a part of GitHub Copilot that can actually learn based on the official documentation and then answer questions in a chat GPT like fashion for you so for example you can do things like github questions react questions mdn webpack typescript and so so many more eventually you're going to be able to train it into your own docs but for now we have a few options here we're going to play around and i want to show you that i just only asked a single question 20 minutes ago just to see if it's working or not but i'm going to be going blind into every question i'm going to ask now so any reaction you see is actually genuine so i'm very excited for this let's go straight into the content if you like that of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe and for more training check out my courses on dometrain.com okay so we have a bit of a disclaimer here you know this is work in progress and so on and then we have a bunch of doc sets which they actually link into the sources of of where this specific doc set was trained on. So the GitHub docs was trained into the official GitHub documentation, the React was based on the React and so on. Now, the question I asked previously had to do with Playwright because I have some experience with Playwright, but I actually wanna start with a different technology. And that is going to be Azure because I do have plenty of Azure experience and I know if the answer is actually accurate or not. So the experience goes as follows. I'm going to say start a new thread. And the first thing you see is, hey, are you a new developer? Are you an intermediate novice? So it's going to give you contextual answers based on your experience. Or do you know this material very well? Do you know little? Do you want a detailed answer? Do you want a very, very detailed answer? Or you just want an answer? Which can be very useful because you don't want beginner level questions if you're a senior or very experienced developer. So I'm going to ask a very genuine question here. And the question has to do with Cosmos DB. Now you don't need to know what Cosmos DB is. It is just a fully managed NoSQL database in Azure. If you're coming from AWS, it's the equivalent of DynamoDB. And if you're coming from GCP, then I'm sure they have one as well. Now the biggest issue with Cosmos DB is actually something called RUs or request units. And I say it's an issue because the way Cosmos DB works is based on your throughput. So if you want to deal with a thousand requests per second, then you might need a thousand are used. It's not quite one for one, but you get the point. You sort of provision a specific amount of traffic or throughput you can actually deal with and you can scale it down or up or even use auto scaling. So here's the question I want to ask it. I want to store around 10 gigabytes of data per month. This data is mostly write heavy with around 1000 writes per second and the reads can fluctuate between one and 10 reads per second, but with spikes of 500 reads per second for a short period of time. What should my R use for the container look like? So here, I'm not just asking something about the docs, but I'm also asking for advice based on the docs. So I'm going to ask that and see if you can actually cope with this. So I'm going to say, I'm just an intermediate developer. I know the material fairly well, and then I want a balanced response. So if I say that, let's see what we get out of it. And you can see it's a similar experience as chat GPT it just sort of type it all the way down. So what we get is to store around 10 gigabytes of data per month, you need to consider the size of each data item. Yes, because by default, one kilobyte worth of document is one RU per read. So it's very useful that it does let us know that, yes, assuming your data items are one kilobyte in size, and then it actually gives us a reference to where it figures this one out. So if I click on this, it shows where it's coming from, which is very useful actually, because when you have sort of a chat bot assistant, you don't necessarily know if you can actually trust it. You know, chat GPT has produced bad results in the past, but giving you a link to where it actually found that information is actually very useful. Then it explains, estimate the total number of RUs per second for your write heavy workload. So 1000 writes by five is 5,000. And then assume the five and a half reads per second, that is 5,000 and then 5.5. .5 which is interesting because when I said it takes one to 10 reads per second on average, it actually averaged out that value to five and a half, which, you know, if you want to be more careful, you might actually say, I actually want it to be 10 just so I don't have any throttling. It's not a bad response, but if it understood the context, I think it would be better to suggest 10. Then it takes into account that peak thing I mentioned. So the 500 reads per second are actually catered for here, but it did sort of forget the five and a half I had before, which I would really like you to take into account because what should I use now? Should I use this or should I use this? Let's see if it actually gives a fun suggestion. And then it points me into a table to explain how physical partitions work, which I don't necessarily think I would really 
care for because that is sort of an implementation detail on Cosmos DB. So I guess I'm fine that it did tell me about this, but I could do without this. And then in the end, it even gives me a number of how much this would actually cost me. Now, I don't remember if there's fluctuation based on the region that this is provisioned, because if you're not using master tables, then is that the pricing for any region? I'm not quite sure. It doesn't give me a reference. I would like it to give me a reference. And then it does say you can also use auto scaling throughput to adjust our use based on demand, which I would expect it to tell me about given that 500 request unit differential based on the reads but it just mentions it as a suggestion in the end. Overall, this is not bad. If I actually had to go and search for this manually, it would have taken me a long time and I have to you know, go to Google, type something, point me to a doc, hope that the information I need is there, while this can go to multiple pages and then just consolidate everything into one response. Overall, very, very nice. Now, the great thing about this is that it looks like you can actually ask a follow-up question about Azure. Now, I don't know if it actually takes into account the previous response. I hope it does. So what I'm going to say is how much is the maximum and minimum amount of US dollars I'd have to pay for this container? And container here actually means the database table, if you may. So same material here. Let's see if we can actually use that previous context. I hope it can. Well, that scared me in the beginning, but actually that was very accurate. So first, it does acknowledge that it has to do with the number of regions you replicate your data to because you can have geo-replication. So that is fine. And then you can have reserved capacity or pay-as-you-go pricing, which is a great detail to know as well. Now, if you replicate your data to one region only and you use pay-as-you-go pricing, then it does give me the details here for that 6,000 R use container, which is the one it created above. And it does tell me it's around 400 dollars per month for 24 7 usage fantastic then if i replicate for example in two additional regions it does give me that scaling so three times the price because three regions instead of one and if i have one region only but with reserved capacity then that value is halved that is very very useful the fact that it actually keeps the context like chat gpt would and it does the math for me and it does answer those questions is very 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 helpful and it gives me sources on where it actually found that information and the calculations. Fantastic. Now, what I'm going to do now is actually throw it a curveball. I don't think it's going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. So what I'm going to say is how would that compare to something like AWS DynamoDB, for example? In fact, I'm going to remove that, for example, because I want it to be <laughs> as accurate as possible. I don't know how much this has been trained into competitors. We can try it. I don't know. I hope something comes out of this. Okay, so comparing Azure Cosmos DB to uh, DynamoDB is not straightforward. Pricing models, Okay, so it does know that DynamoDB has RCUs and WCUs, so they split writes and reads, and you can provision them differently, which is pretty neat. Then it gives you a bunch of information, not concrete numbers, but actually quite a few references to go and research myself. So that is not bad. The fact that this is trained on Azure Docs, but it still can use AWS terminology and also link me to it, is very, very useful. I'm just going to give it the last try. If this actually works, it's insane. If not, at least I tried. How much would the same table cost in AWS DynamoDB? I don't think it's going to work. I'm going to try it. Oh my God. So it does use Azure Docs knowledge. So it doesn't actually go to AWS. What's wrong with my internet? What the hell? Let's give it a second for that to load. Okay, so it does use still an Azure-based source, which of course, can be incorrect unless they actually update it. But it does give me numbers and it does actually tell me how much it would cost for the exact same thing, taking everything into account, which is so useful if it is accurate. And it would be awesome if the cloud could be a category. So all three providers or all three sort of doc sets could be used together to tell you things like this. This is actually not the, so, so useful. I think this is extremely useful. I think as more companies add their stuff in here, this can be even more useful. And as we'll be allowed to actually train this into our own documentation, our own companies, especially for big companies, that can be game changing because I can't tell you how many times something is on a markdown file on GitHub or on Confluence or on some other wiki somewhere. And it's so hard to find things in a company. So. If a single company can actually move everything into a single source and use this and train it on their data set, that can be game changing. I cannot wait to see where this is going and I'm so here for it. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about this? And is that something you'd be using on a day-to-day -day basis? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.